What's going on guys? I'm gonna show y'all this morning how to measure a deer cape for shoulder mount. Uh, there's a few things you gotta kinda watch out for. If you get online, start Googling, trying to learn how to do it, they're gonna show you, you're gonna see about five or six different ways uh, to measure them. And the problem is they actually use different letters for each measurement on some of the different sites. Why that is, I mean, it should be all the same thing, but typically what I've seen the A measurement is gonna be from the eye to the tip of the nose. The B measurement is usually around the atlas up under the bottom of the neck. But basically, it's not gonna be the smallest part of the neck. They, they will say three inches behind the ears and then around the, the base of the jawbone. And then the, the uh, C measurement is the smallest part of the neck up around right behind tight on the ears. D measurement is going to be the biggest width of your neck. Some places you order from will only have three. They won't actually include the D measurement, which honestly is probably the, the least important and the most important all at the same time. Let me explain to you what I'm talking about. On this cape right here, I've already got this laid out because... I forgot to bring my chesty down here, so I'm not gonna be able to use both hands. But y'all can see from the corner of that eye opening, right in the front corner to the tip of that nose, I mean, you're looking right at seven inches. And a lot of places will tell you to measure these heads when you cape the deer, measure the meat, measure everything when you first get the cape off of it. Well, this deer right here is from Texas. In the state of Alabama, you cannot bring the whole head back into the state. It has got to be caped out. So all of my measurements that I do, I just do the same way. I never measure muscles. I never measure meat. I always measure the cape while it's green before I have actually tanned it. Uh, you want to go ahead and flesh it if it's got a lot of meat in it to make sure that you're getting a true skin to skin measurement. If it's not, uh, if it don't have a whole lot of meat in it, you can stretch it out really good and make sure that you get your full measurement. Now, back to what I was saying. When you're taking that, that full size neck measurement, even though you may not be able to get the exact size form that you're needing for that full size growth measurement, the B measurement was what they say is about three inches behind the ear. You know, that can vary because I don't know if it's from the ear here, from the butt of the ear, no telling. But it's from where the atlas on the back of the ear is. It's that first vertebrae where the skull comes down, you've got that atlas where it connects to his vertebrae. It's gonna be right in there somewhere. So when you put your tape up down to that neck, and right there you're looking at about 18 inches, but you're gonna to have to stretch, you're gonna to have to stretch that cape as hard as you possibly can. And see that, just that little bit right there brought it out to a 20. All you're gonna do is lay your tape flat and just double that measurement. With most forms, when you go to order your forms, uh, I would say, probably the average typical is going to be your, your D measurement, your full girth is going to be about two to three inches bigger than your B measurement. Now on a deer that's killed in early bow season before his neck is swollen from rut, that Atlas measurement is going to stay almost exactly the same. It's going to be very, very close. The deer's, you know, muscle does not swell right there in his throat. It starts to swell on the, the back muscles of that neck. So that will stay nearly the same. Now, as that deer begins to run, his neck begins to swell. Y'all know as well as I do, their neck's gonna get bigger. But that, that full swell measurement is gonna change. So I like to go by that B measurement when I'm originally trying to pick what form I want. The good thing is if you can get the B measurement close to right, you're not gonna have a whole bunch of leeway. It's gonna have to, it's gonna to have to fit pretty good around that, that smallest part of that neck because there's nothing to give there. You can't, you can't do but so much stretching. And if you stretch it too much, your eyes and your nose measurement and all is gonna start changing and you're gonna start pulling. And you're gonna pull the, the skin down from the antlers, you're gonna pull the skin down from the eyes. And as it dries, it's gonna to wanna to pull itself back into place and you're gonna mess, you're gonna mess that mount up as it starts drying, it's just gonna pull all different directions. But I like to err on the side of a smaller form. So most of the time, when you go to order these forms, you're not gonna be able to find one that is exactly the size of the deer you measure. Like say this deer is a, say it's a 20 by 22 and a half, 
on a D measurement. Well, if that 20 inch atlas is correct, well, say I go look the forms up and all they've got is a 19 or a 21. I'm not gonna pick the 21. I will go with the 19. And when you get the deer put on that form, before you glue it up, anything, always dry fit it. Take your, your, your hide and everything. Once it's tanned, you're ready to mount it up. Before you do glue or anything, put that cape over that form and see how it fits it. If you've aired to the, the smaller form, you can always add clay to your form and just enhance those muscles slightly where you need it based on the size of that cape and you can make it fit perfectly. If your form is too big, you can shave down form. You can shave that foam down and make it fit, but it's a whole lot more work and it's a whole lot harder to get it smooth to make the transitions easy, you know, to make the transitions right. Uh, that foam, it, cutting it off and all, you're gonna have to almost carve it and you're gonna leave sharp lines and you're gonna have to sand it. But a little bit of clay, I mean, clay doesn't cost nothing and a little bit of clay goes a long way. I mean, you can add, just a quarter inch of clay on both sides of the neck and you done gone up a half inch on your form size. So, you know, what little part of that base of that neck you've got, you can add some size to it in just a second and make it fit not only correctly, but where you need it to fit. When you go to dry fit that cape, if there's places and there's some deer have got bigger, bigger jowls, some of them got a bigger snout, different stuff like that, you can actually custom make that to where it fits your hide. I mean, deer like people, so they're not all gonna be the same. But that measurement right there, I would say is gonna be, gonna be your most important. And if this says I need a 20, and all they've got is a 19 to 21, go with the 19. Your other, your other measurements, stretch this out right here. Like once you get that neck stretched out, I mean, see, you're looking at a, I mean, you're looking at a 24 inch neck. So if this atlas measurement, see this deer come from Texas, so his body is not going to be very big. The deer probably didn't weigh 150 pounds, but he's got a 24 inch swell. So to, to buy a form that's gonna fit that atlas, if I buy a 24 inch swell on that D measurement, that atlas measurement's gonna be 22 inches and the deer will never go on a form and look anatomically, hard word to say, correct. And that's what you're gonna want. You, you've gotta make that face and that head look right. The rest of it is really easy to alter with some modeling clay. Like I said, if, if you get it on there and the head and all fits perfect, but you had to order a 20 inch, or say it's a 22 inch neck form, like for this one right here. If I end up with a 22 inch neck on my form, I know going into it that I've gotta add two inches and always get back to that full size neck measurement. If you can help it, don't ever put a 24 inch D measurement on a 22 inch form without adding the extra girth. Uh, if you've ever done a tax for me before, everybody knows that anybody that's ever killed a deer thinks the neck on their deer was the biggest neck of any deer they ever shot. It's never the case ever, except for you know, one out of a hundred. Most of the time, if somebody says the neck was like a bull, it's the biggest form you got. I mean, they're wanting a 30 inch neck on a deer and the deer measures 24 inches, you know, like this right here. A lot of times, proportionally, the neck looks giant on the deer because the body's run down from the rut. The deer may weigh 140 pounds and it's got a 24 inch neck on it and they just think the neck is just gigantic, but it's not necessarily the case. So you do wanna make sure that you get the full size neck back into that deer. So whatever that deer measures right now, I have got to get that measurement back out of it because if it's too small, the customer is not gonna be happy anyway. They're gonna expect a bigger neck than what you're probably gonna give them to begin with, but always make sure that you at least get your full size swell right back out of it. So anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful. Not a whole lot of information, but I think it's good advice. Like I said, air to the small when you buy the form, add your modeling clay, just, just put it right back where the muscles are already at on the form. Just add to it to build that size and the measurements back up. Then you've got a custom fit for every cape you got. Appreciate y'all watching. Y'all go subscribe. Thank you.